Hi, I'm Tim and welcome back to another video. In this video, I'm going to show you a new web browser which I've discovered. Whether it's um, new or not is uh, another question actually with regard to the release and production of this version. I've opened up the web browser here as you'll see on screen and the browser is called Florp. I presume that's how it's uh, actually pronounced. Now, they're claiming it to be unlimited customization with Florp. Florp is built on Firefox and was built in Japan and is a new browser with excellent privacy and flexibility. Now, I won't read all the details about it, but if you want to uh, have a look at the website yourself, the website address is florp.app and that will take you directly to the actual website. Now the features they are actually claiming is a strong tracking protection, flexible layout control, switchable design, regular updates, no user tracking and completely open source. Now, as it says in the actual website at the top, it's actually built on Firefox. Um, so it appears it's actually using the source code for Firefox but it does actually uh, have strong tracking protection and um, being completely open source, I guess it's actually developed better rather than actually being owned by a particular company that some browsers are actually built on. So looking down, we've got dual sidebar, flexible toolbar and tab bar. Florp does not track users and only blocks malicious tracking on websites. With Florp, you can build an internet that benefits both websites and users. Blocking only harmful trackers by listening to the opinions of both website owners who make a living from advertising and users who want to protect their privacy. Why not use Florp in finding a better internet? So as it states, it's actually built in Japan. So there are some articles which are written in Japanese, as you'll see here, which I'm hovering over. Um, you can create your own browser with Florp. So get the latest version of Florp. If we click download, it takes you to their download page. Looking at the platforms, it's available for Windows 64, there's an online installer which will actually download the just the online installer and then it will actually, within the installer, download the actual full-blown application. There's also the Windows 64-bit offline installer, which is the one I actually downloaded. Um, it ended up being, let's have a look, um, yeah, ended up being about... 400 megabytes in total with all the configurations in the actual application itself now there is actually a standalone version as well without um, an installer so you can actually use it as a standalone version um, but there's also a windows 32-bit version a version for mac os windows portable version this is the version that i'm actually using just for testing purposes at the moment there's a Linux version and a Daylight version, which is um, seems to be the beta version. Um, you can actually go to their GitHub page where there are actually releases and information and so on, which is usual on GitHub. Um, there you'll see releases. There's actually 51 releases and the current release is version 11.7.1 .7 at the time of recording this video. Um, it seems to be there's quite a lot of contributors to this, more than 5,000. Um, actually, 5,206 contributors to this. Although, maybe some of them could be um, sort of from Firefox. So, as it being a fork of Firefox, it could actually be some of the contributors are actually pulled over from Firefox. Um, but anyway, it seems to be uh, sort of a decent browser. Um, I have actually submitted the actual application across to Virus Total, and it did come back 100% clear. So um, 
it is actually clear of viruses so i think it's actually safe to use and the actual installer it is actually digitally signed and it's open source developer and that's the name of the actual developer there so as i say there's various releases so if we click on releases here on github there's actually the linux version the mac os version and also the portable version as well so if we go back to the website um just to confirm it was actually updated all these files were updated two weeks ago so it is actually regularly updated so if we go to the windows portable version this is the version that i've actually uh, testing out at the moment so i'll close this window and we'll open up the actual floor application and here you'll probably see it looks familiar to uh, Firefox I have actually customized this a bit in the settings so if we go into settings I'll take you through uh, briefly the various settings and these might be familiar to you if you're already using Firefox so we have general startup options for example configuring various tabs um, position of a new tabs floor notes um, enable floor notes this can solve problems of losing content due to overwriting notes during synchronization so scrolling down you can actually change the language change the font the zoom level and so on check for updates performance related settings browser settings DRM settings so it's actually using DRM digital rights management content settings from use Firefox user agent so it's actually using the settings from Firefox you can change the appearance the design the layout customize the tab the theme mode colors and so on sidebar which is this bar here which I'm hovering over where you can customize that so you can actually add various options to the web panel download settings though it'll ask you where you want to do where you want to save the actual downloads to and also what to do with various file types which you can configure here so i've just set these to always ask what i want to do with pdf for, for example xml files webp image files and so on keyboard shortcuts you can add your own keyboard shortcuts i haven't actually added these at the moment but we scroll down you can see there's various history actions so back so you can add a shortcut for, to go back and so on the home tab where you can configure the home tab and the new window tab search options so you can configure the search engine it was actually set by default to google um, and i actually changed it to duckduckgo because i prefer duckduckgo as my default search engine so i did actually change that in both of these settings here to duckduckgo rather than google so here in the privacy and security is probably the option that you want to hear about most um, so here we have browser privacy enhanced tracking protection trackers followed you around the online and collect information about your browsing habits interests floor blocks many of these trackers and other malicious scripts so it's set by default to standard which is balanced for protection and performance pages will load normally floor blocks the following social media trackers cross-site cookies in all windows tracking content in private windows crypto miners and also finger printers you can actually change this to strict um, but it's stating that it might actually break some websites so they might actually might not actually load properly um, so i'll leave it as standard at the moment you can actually have the custom option whereby you can change the various uh, cookies options yourself and also tracking content as well send websites that do not track 
I changed this from the default, which was only when Florp is set to block known trackers. I changed this to always. Block more ads and trackers. This section contains a set of extensions designed to block ads and trackers. So it will actually have the uh, uBlock origin and Facebook container. So it prevents Facebook from tracking you around the web. Facebook container extension helps you take control and isolate your web activity from Facebook. So these two are extensions which you can actually enable in this browser if you so wish. And also under the resist fingerprinting and IP address leaks, enable strong protection against fingerprinting. That's actually disabled at the moment. Um, under that we have automatically dismiss access confirmation prompts for HTML5, that's enabled. Disable WebGL, that's actually disabled by default. Enable WebRTC connection, that's actually enabled by default. Cookies and site data, you can clear your site data, manage your data and so on. Logins and passwords, it will actually remember your logins and passwords if you so wish. I've actually disabled this as I use a separate password manager. So the next option down is sync and here you can sync it with um, bookmarks, history tabs and passwords across all your devices. So for example if you've got the macOS version of Flop as well you can actually sync with your Windows and Mac PCs. So we'll open up a new tab and if we click the home button you'll see it takes you to the Florp background image where we have the search bar from DuckDuckGo if you remember I changed the search engine from Google so if you left it at default it would be a, a Google search the web here instead of a DuckDuckGo for example and type in a quick search it seems to load web pages very quickly for example, that's a web page loaded uh, really fast there. So it seems to be a very quick browser. The uh, browser that I have been using is Brave. And I have to say, this Flop browser is a lot uh, quicker than actually Brave. Uh, I thought Brave was quite quick, but uh, this seems quicker compared with Brave. Whether it uh, continues to be fast enough later on after web pages have been cached and so on, um, I'm not sure, but uh, I'll certainly give it a go for a few weeks and see how I get on with this browser and see if it continues to perform better than my current web browser. So if we go to Amazon as well, here we have the Amazon web page that actually loaded quite quickly as well. Certainly a responsive browser anyway. The scrolling up and down is quick as well. It does actually have smooth scrolling option in it and I did actually enable this so rather than it jumping lines at a time it's actually uh, using smooth scrolling which is better on the eyes I have to say so if we go to YouTube so if we go to trending music so on it seems to load YouTube okay as well uh, videos seem to be playing here let's just take a quick look at the video yep it's certainly playing YouTube shorts okay so we'll try facebook.com, see if that loads okay. It seems to be uh, loading the home page anyway. So I did see a post actually about it not um, loading Facebook properly. But um, let me try and log in. I'll just uh, I'll hide my login details obviously and see if it logs me in okay. And yet yeah, I can confirm that it does actually load Facebook okay as well. Um, so websites seem okay um, whether every website loads okay in this browser um, I can't actually tell because I obviously I can't load every single website but a couple of popular ones there seem to load okay I'll give this browser a go over the next few weeks um, I'll probably report back in the comments or on my uh, notice board on my YouTube channel so just keep an eye out for any updates there um, if I don't post anything, it means everything's fine and um, I'm still using the browser basically. So whether you want to give this browser a go, whether you've tried it before, 
certainly uh, leave a comment below in the video um yeah so certainly let me know if you've tried this browser how you think it is and how you've got on with it and whether you're going to give this browser a go as well yourself just one final thing before i go thought we'd take a look at the uh, task manager and see uh, what it's like on system resources so we're going to task manager and we should be able to search for that task and as you'll see using eight percent of my memory um i have 64 gigabytes of ram on this uh, pc um it's using one percent of cpu eight percent of memory no disk activity of course and no network activity because I've, all i've done is opened five blank tabs we just open a website and see what uh, task manager brings up there it's using three percent two percent cpu eight percent of ram so it's, so it seems fairly good on system resources um obviously it depends what content you're loading so let's try another one youtube and just scroll down a little bit um yeah it's using nine percent of memory so it's 680 700 megabytes of uh, ram yeah about 700 megabytes so it doesn't seem too bad on system resources as the cpu it's using one between one and two percent um anyway thanks for watching this video and uh, more videos coming again soon bye for now